When patients are choosing the, uh, an implant, it's very important for them to get the implant that they really like. Uh, the best way to help a person, a woman, to choose their implant size is uh, the surgeon needs to know what it is that they are interested in. That's why it's very important to bring a picture with them so that the surgeon know that. The second thing is uh, knowing the dimensions. So I explained to the patients that uh, what it goes into the implant selection process is what we call bi-dimensional planning. What it is essentially is very simple. The implant has, like any three-dimensional structure, has a three dimensions, X, Y, and a Z. X is the width of the implant, Y is the height of the implant, and Z is the projection. The analogy I use with my patients that they understand very well is, think of it as you build, making a structure. You have a square footage, that's your X and Y, and the Z is the number of floors you want to put on it. So you want to be first floor, second floor, fourth and fifth, and so, so forth and so on. So patient understands what I'm talking about. And I tell the patients that the X and Y dimensions are, uh, are the dimensions that pretty much is dictated by their own anatomy. However, the Z pro or the projection of the implant is what they wish to have. So they put sizes on in their bra with a t-shirt on and they choose that amount of projection. When patients are choosing the, uh, an implant, it's very important for them to get the implant that they really like and the implant that can provide them the dimensions that we, uh, they, they enjoy having in terms of the projection, the width of the implant. And among all the uh, companies out there, I think Netral provides the women with the most flexibility in terms of the options. Uh, as a matter of fact, the analogy I used earlier, you know, when we choose an implant, we choose the square footage of the building, that's the X and the Y of the implant, but the floors, the number of floors is the projection, how much the implant comes out, so how much nipple projection they get. And as a matter of fact, Neutral has five different projections for the same X and Y, so it can go floor one, two, three, four, or five. I tell the patient, I chose your X and Y, the square footage, you tell me how many floors you wanna have. And we choose that number of floors based on what they do in terms of their projection. And lastly, once you choose your floor, then you have three suites to choose from. That's what we call cohesivity. So we have an implants that's less cohesive, and we have implants that are most cohesive, what we call the gummiest, and those implants will give more upper pull fullness, and we have implants kind of in the middle, and that implant is uh, probably the most common implant I use in my practice, but we have options to choose from. So it's that flexibility in the portfolio that Natural offers that makes, I think Natural is one of the best uh, uh, the implant selection out there. Natural breast implants important safety information and approved uses. Breast implants are not considered lifetime devices. The longer people have them, the greater the chances are that they will develop complications, some of which will require more surgery. Breast implants have been associated with the development of a cancer of the immune system called breast implant associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma, BIAALCL. This cancer occurs more commonly in patients with textured breast implants than smooth implants, although rates are not well defined. Some patients have died from BIAALCL. Patients receiving breast implants have reported a variety of systemic symptoms such as joint pain, muscle aches, confusion, chronic fatigue, autoimmune diseases, and others. Individual patient risk for developing these symptoms has not been well established. Some patients report complete resolution of symptoms when the implants are removed without replacement. Who can get breast implants? Natural breast implants are approved for the following. Breast augmentation for women at least 22 years old for silicone-filled implants and for women at least 18 years old for saline-filled implants. Breast augmentation includes primary breast augmentation to increase the breast size and revision surgery to correct or improve the result of a primary breast augmentation. Breast reconstruction. This includes primary breast reconstruction to replace breast tissue that has been removed due to cancer or trauma or that has failed to develop properly due to a severe breast abnormality. This also includes revision surgery to correct or improve the result of a primary breast reconstruction. Who should not get breast implants? Breast implant surgery should not be performed in women with active infection anywhere in their body, women with existing cancer or precancer of their breast who have not received adequate treatment for those conditions, women who are currently pregnant or nursing. What should I tell my doctor? Tell your doctor if you have any of the following conditions as the risks of breast implant surgery may be higher. Autoimmune diseases, example, 
example, lupus and scleroderma, a weakened immune system, example, taking medications to decrease the body's immune response, planned chemotherapy or radiation therapy following breast implant placement, conditions or medications that interfere with wound healing and blood clotting, reduced blood supply to breast tissue, clinical diagnosis of depression or other mental health disorders, including body dysmorphic disorder and eating disorders. Those with diagnosis of depression or other mental health disorders should wait for resolution or stabilization of these conditions prior to undergoing breast implantation surgery. What else should I consider? There is a boxed warning for breast implants. Please see bold text at beginning. Many changes to your breasts following implantation are irreversible. If you later choose to have your implants removed and not replaced, you may experience dimpling, puckering, wrinkling, or other cosmetic changes, which may be permanent. Breast implantation is likely not a one-time surgery. The longer implants are in place, the greater the potential risk for complications. You will likely need additional surgeries on your breasts due to complications or unacceptable cosmetic results. Thus, you should also consider the complication rates for later revision surgery, since you may experience these risks in the future. Cancer treatments and surgery will affect the outcome and timing of breast reconstruction. Breast implants may affect your ability to breastfeed, either by reducing or eliminating milk production. Rupture of a silicone filled breast implant is most often silent. Even if you have no symptoms, you should have your first ultrasound or MRI at five to six years after your initial implant surgery, and then every two to three years thereafter, regardless of whether your implants are for augmentation or reconstruction. If you have symptoms of or uncertain ultrasound results for breast implant rupture, an MRI is recommended. Additional imaging may be required depending on your medical history and status. The health consequences of a ruptured silicone gel-filled breast implant have not been fully established. Routine screening mammography for breast cancer will be more difficult, and implants may rupture during the procedure. Perform self-examination every month for cancer screening and ask your surgeon to help you distinguish the implant from your breast tissue. Lumps, persistent pain, swelling, hardening, or changes in implant shape should be reported to your surgeon and possibly evaluated with imaging. What are key complications with breast implants? Key complications include reoperation, implant removal with or without replacement, implant rupture with silicone-filled implants, implant deflation with saline-filled implants, and capsular contracture, severe scar tissue around the implant. Other complications include include breast pain, swelling, asymmetry, wrinkling, rippling, implant malposition, nipple complications, hypertrophic scarring, and implant palpability visibility. Talk to your doctor about other complications. For more information, see the patient brochures at www.allergan.com products. To report a problem with Natrell breast implants, please call Allergan at 1-800-624-4261. The sale and distribution of Natrell breast implants is restricted to licensed physicians who provide information to patients about the risks and benefits of breast implant surgery.